Alright, so in this video we're going to talk about something near and dear to my heart, and that is ad hoc scripts. So let's get into it. So what we're going to cover in this video is just something that struck me the other day. It's something that we do in my team. I'll tell you a small story about the motivation behind it. And then I thought, hey, you know what, let's make a video of this thing. See if I can share this idea and maybe somebody else finds that this is a nice way of doing stuff. So let's have story time first and foremost. The other day I was unfortunately forced to deal with an issue at work, which was related to a, a system failure, basically. And the system failure in question resulted in an inconsistent state where we needed to do some manual work. Now, that's not something anybody wants. No software developer wants to deal with a system which creates a situation where he or she needs to do manual work. But unfortunately, that is just the way this world works. Even if you have the best system in the world, it's very likely that you will have certain manual processes. Now, Historically, we've had a approach to solving this problem where, uh, well, stop me if you've ever heard this before. You need to do something, fix an order, fix a bug, fix a rollout or whatever, and you don't know how to do it. And there's like one person at the entire company who knows how to do it, and that person is sick today. Or you have to go and, uh, if you're lucky, they're there and they might be able to walk you through it. And so this is a very common problem. I would say that I've had this issue in every single company I've ever been part of. Now, the poor man's choice to solve, or the poor man's way of solving this problem is to do something that my coworker absolutely hates, and he hates me for it because unfortunately he's the guy who remembers everything and knows everything because he did it, and he doesn't want to do this. So I force him to do it, and then I help him. And that is to write documentation. Writing documentation is a great thing uh, if you have limited amounts of time or you have a process that is fairly complicated with multiple steps. I usually tell people that you should write your, if you have common tasks that you do every so often and nobody cares enough to remember, you need to write it down as a step-by-step -step tutorial to guide people through the thing. And so we did that thing and we realized that this process is actually getting worse and worse and worse and lengthier and lengthier and lengthier. And the documentation unfortunately started getting out of date, which is the problem with documentation. So I said, or so the natural next step, which is the thing that most people do, is that they create some form of pseudo automation, usually a shell script or a script of some sort. Now, that is a great thing. If you can create a script that helps you do something or to simplify the process and speed it up, that's the best thing you can do. Now, the problem with that is that that is something that rots really, really quickly. And the thing that I've found most of the time is that you end up, especially if you have a lot of this stuff, with all of these random like scripts that do something. They can ping, a, ping an environment. They can grab some data from something or like they can send an email like there's so many different flavors every company has their own stuff right and every script is different and so what I did I spoke to my coworkers and I said can we how about this how about we adopt our own CLI we create our own CLI for this thing and so said and done they thought that yeah that could be nice we could create some consistency and so i showed them something that has been working for me really really well when i've dealt with these sorts of problems in the past so i'll show you guys as well so all i've done here is that i've created this little well it's just called ad hoc cli which is a small project that just includes some very simple stuff. So I have a dependency on Axios and one on Commander. Now Commander, you mean this works for literally every single programming language. It's just that I'm using Node with TypeScript because it's the simplest thing for me, right? And so with Commander, what I can do is that I can do something like this. I create a script that just takes in well, I instantiate a program where I declare different commands that do something. Now, these are, of course, just toy commands. So I have this little command here that goes and just checks GitHub, it gets the status code of GitHub. And there, this command here is just going to give me a random number where I give it some 
amount of di digits and it just tells me hey here's a random number and these are of course just demo examples but in the real world if we look at the CLI that I have uh, at work and I've had in the past. These things can be everything from checking up times to doing some computation or helping me with different tasks. In some cases we've been forced to email orders that failed for some reason to an external party so it like the script just I basically copy paste in a session cookie that I have in my browser into the CLI and then it just pulls out the data does some pre-computation on the data so that it's in a shape that I can send to the client or even sends the email for me. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. And now, as I was saying, this is very common. You usually have a bunch of shell scripts. That I would argue to you is that treat these shell scripts with a little bit more respect and actually wrap all of this stuff in a CLI because what's very powerful about this is that now this becomes a first class citizen in your work process within the team and it becomes much easier for you to extend it. So the way I think that you should think about this is similar to a kernel pattern. So this is your aggregate uh, file. This is where you the only thing that you put into the entry point is basically each new command. And then you structure all of your random scripts as libraries, a small little library. So here I have a GitHub library and it does this simple little thing where it just it's just a function that goes and does something. In this case it's just going to print up the status. And I can add tests and everything into to this little module or library. And then I have a random library where I add this script here. And this is literally the same thing you would have done if you were to make these one-off scripts. It's just that you're lifting it into a bigger context. You you standardize it, standardize it if that makes sense. And from my experience, by just doing this simple thing, it becomes much more extensible and much cleaner. And it actually becomes something that a lot of developers are kind of, they kind of enjoy this. They think it's kind of fun to, to actually, to treat this with a little bit more respect. Because the worst thing is if you have some person who has been taking care of some process or something like that, and they have created their own like script or something like that, that you don't really understand how it works. And usually it breaks at some point and you don't really know how to interact with it. So you kind of have to reverse engineer the thing. And from my experience, this has turned out, th this approach of dealing with ad hoc scripts has become, well, it's my go-to. And I think that you should try it out. It's uh, it's a very nice thing to start thinking in terms of internal tools because it's such a it's such a lightweight thing for you to do and it keeps a consistency that is uh, well it's pretty great so all i really wanted to show you and what i want you to take away from this is that instead of you treating your internal process as these manual things that you have to do as either one-off solutions or something that you sort of document or something that lives in somebody's head. Next time, try to think about if you could actually convert this whole thing to something like this, where it's just a CLI. You wrapped your internal processes in a command structure where a lot of the stuff that you need can actually be documented through a very nice and easy to consume interface that is super easy for a beginner or a new hire or someone like that to just get on board with immediately. And it's also going to help you in many cases to do things that you might have done manually with some, I mean, I've done everything from just raw JSON and then had like a template string that I kind of format in some way on my local laptop. Try to just lift this up to a level and treat it with the sort of respect you would treat your production code. And you will find that your, your manual processes and your ad hoc scripts they stay healthy and they still stay m m more well maintained over time than if you just treat them as these kind of garbage scripts that you're just using as a temporary thing. Have a great day.